Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to On Your Mental. This is the podcast that shares candid, open, and sometimes vulnerable conversations between and about men. And on this week's episode, I have with me my friend Jeff. Jeff and I, we have a talk today about men, duty, and their duty to love. And in this episode, I really encourage you to try and stick it out through the whole thing because there's this moment where like my whole perspective on love change based on this conversation. And to me, it's so worth it for you to get to that point. So if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. That way, you know, when new episodes are coming out. And for now, I will see you all in a moment when the episode starts. Peace. Well, first of all, let me start off by saying welcome, Jeff. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to On Your Mental. I was thinking back earlier, and I guess when we started talking about what we're going to film today and the topics we're going to talk about today, uh, when I started On Your Mental, I had asked you, would you ever be interested in being yes. on? And you said right away you yeah, would. Yeah, absolutely. And you're so sweet. Oh. Just supporting your friends. <laughs> what a good guy. Uh, and the thing that you had said you wanted to talk about then, and it's one of the things we'll talk about today, is duty of men right responsibilities that men have right i like that we're talking about this um first of all i should maybe like address who you are uh jeff by the way is a co-worker of mine <laughs> yeah. he's, he's been someone that i've known now for about five years or so a little over yes. five years yes um yeah great guy great guy pole dancer okay yeah competitive uh, uh I would say retired. Um, I, I think I went through a little bit of an identity crisis, actually, <laughs> a couple of years back. That sort of transition between, you know, what my identity was, which is sure. a pole dancer primarily, to something that I'm not doing as much anymore just because of time limitations and other factors, right? Mm. So in my heart, I will always, that will always be part of me. Yeah. And I still get introduced it's as what, that. Uh, yeah, but like, I feel like, like I'm doing. lying a little bit. Because I no, haven't pulled in honestly about three years, mm. um, so it's been a while. So a retired, competitive pole dancer, yeah. fitness instructor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He does it all. <laughs> <laughs> he does it all. But no, nah, like I remember the first time you told me you did pole, I was like completely blown away. I was like, no way. <laughs> you could be like, this is a real thing. This guy's a competitive pole dancer, and it was like so cool. Um, but you're like pretty well like accomplished as a pole dancer too, no? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, when I first started out, it was just like a random thing. Interestingly enough, I started because of a breakup. Oh, and really? It, yes, really? <laughs> yes. Huh. Uh, it was to get my mind off things specifically. Mm. And so then, you got on the stripper. No, I know, I know. The way that makes it sound, right? I got on a bad breakup, so I started pole dancing. He went to a strip club and he was like, I'm going to do yeah. that. That's going to show her. That is literally a story of at least a couple of the my, uh, pole, pole dancer friends, female pole dancer friends, yeah. literally after a breakup went to a strip club and be like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Mm. That's not what happened though for me <laughs> specifically. Uh, I think it was around New Year's of that year. I think it was like 2012 or 2013, so mm. many, many years ago seems like now um uh I, I made it as a new year's resolution to learn how to dance because i thought mm. all men should know how to dance in one way yeah, or another it's a good skill yeah and and i picked up like groupon for some like dances like traditional dances mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i had a friend who was studying in copenhagen at the time and she was taking pole dance lessons and she wanted to continue here and she asked me and i was like why not <laughs> and then how I old were you at the time 24 24 wow, 25 so wow. right around my your age, age yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the prime of my life. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. Too. Um, and then I took a couple of classes, and I I turned out to do well in it, mm -hmm. and I received you know praise from my instructors and such. And there actually are national championships, yeah, provincial yeah. and national champions for uh, specifically pole sport. When people think pole dance, yes, they think strippers, mm -hmm. they think a burlesque, they think sex, which is a very important part of it mm. that I would never, ever, ever, you know, turn my back to. Sure. Uh, because a lot of my most respected, you know, uh, instructors and stuff came from that background and mm -hmm. they built the sport. Um, but I personally it geared towards the more athletic side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I competed. I ended up winning the Canadian champion. So for that one year, so sick, I was dude. the best male pole dancer in canada that's so cool man <laughs> that's actually so cool man. yeah but yeah, i just i remember just being so like shocked it was just like wow i've never met a pole dancer before i've never spoken to one <laughs> um, yeah so jeff we've known each other now for about five years and what topic you wanted to talk about and it ties into an episode actually two weeks ago for us we're filming this now but that will have been out two weeks ago we're talking a little bit today about duty right. 
that men have. We're talking a little bit about love and how men, I guess, live in a world filled with love, I guess, to some extent. But we talked about that a few months ago now, well, a number of months ago now, I guess start of the year when this started. And you said you wanted to come and talk about duty. So that's going to be one of the things that we talk about. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, I guess, share with people listening and watching is you have, a, I think, a very strong education background or background that is educated. What's the right way of saying <laughs> yeah. this? You're an educated man. Yeah. You're an educated man. Um, yeah, what, what, I, what's your degrees? Give me the rundown <laughs> again. You got a few of them, no? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the reason I specifically wanted to talk about this is because this is something... Um, that I've both studied deeply uh, mm -hmm. in in my degrees and uh, just to say them and I hate saying them because mm -hmm. I feel like <laughs> I sound like such a smarmy like ooh hoity toity type. That's exactly why you're here. <laughs> um, but I have three full degrees: mm -hmm. um, bachelor's in English literature, uh, psychology, and philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I kind of I took them all because I have deep interest in each, but I've kind of rolled them all together mm -hmm. and I really help like the three degrees kind of really help me understand each one in a in a, in its own way mm -hmm. so what what I mean is uh specifically I would say my primary degree although it's the last degree I I got was mm. philosophy and I got interested in that specifically because of one of my psychology degrees um, in one of my final papers of psychology I studied essentially psychology uh, cognition and morality mm. Uh, developing cognition and morality because my background, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, my main focus in my psychology degree was uh, adolescent development and evolutionary psychology. Hmm. Ew, I won't get too much into it. Like yeah, yeah. a part of me is like, how deep do I want to go down that yeah. hole academically <laughs> and, and understanding that the audience here isn't necessarily here to listen yeah, to that. Yeah. Um, but I, I had deep interest in, in that, and it was such a deep interest, such an interesting topic for me, I decided to pursue um, ethics and morality specifically within philosophy. So I took a, another degree in that. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about my English degree. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was just there. First one. That was just there. That was just there. Yeah. Um, though I feel that plays weirdly into my psychology degree because mm. I, my special interest in, um, literature was actually this concept of narratives. Yeah. Uh, he, people, humans, right. Are a, uh, narrative species, right. Mm -hmm. What that means is we understand the world and each other through stories, mm -hmm. right. Prehistorically before even written language there was ballads and bards right. and and they would sing these stories and it'd be a oral history of things right mm -hmm. so our identity as as a species is through storytelling yeah and one of my um uh, classes in psychology was in uh, like early childhood education. And if you've ever like, I don't know if you have any nieces or nephews or just been around little kids yeah, yeah. that are like three, four years old mm -hmm. and you ask them how their day was, it's fucking all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have nephews, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, I'll just say this right I'm not good with children. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> you just try and like psychoanalyze them. Like. <laughs> no, I just, I treat everyone the same. Yeah, like adults. Yeah, like adults, yeah. but you can't because they don't. And the reason behind that is because cognitively, <laughs> the brain hasn't developed past the point where they understand the world as a, mm -hmm. a narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Because we understand the world in a causal view. Mm -hmm. One thing causes another, causes another. And that's yeah. how we make the world coherent in our minds. Yeah. So, and that makes sense. I mean, even when you think about like looking at some of the previous episodes that we've mm -hmm. had on here, right? We try and understand why things exist the way that they are, right? That's some of the common themes that come up in conversation or the way the conversations go. And I guess, yeah, it is a causal approach to things I've never mm -hmm. like put into terms like yes. that, which is why I'm so happy you're here because you're going to help me learn today. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and as much as I state my, like, I get kind of like uncomfortable when people state my degrees is that I never want to sound like I know more than other mm -hmm. people. It's not necessarily that I know more. It's that I've taken the time you know, to look deeply within myself mm -hmm. um, and, and to come up to as to why I think the way that I do. Yeah. And that goes into the philosophy aspect of things. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I really appreciate about my education, I spent, by the way, I, three degrees took me like six years and I took four classes a semester, every semester for six years. God, so man. fucking burned out. Yeah, no kidding, man. No kidding. But that was coming from uh, in my teenage years, not even wanting to go to university. Hmm. 
and I feel like it ends I, up with three degrees. I, <laughs> degrees. And and I feel like philosophy specifically, but it, it I I like I'm a forever learner or whatever lifetime mm-hmm. learner type thing. Mm-hmm. And the most wonderful thing about learning and being active learner is it, it puts into words thoughts you already have. Sure. And that's what I really appreciate specifically about philosophy, which is these concepts that I've always had and pondered about. But now I can give it a name Mm -hmm. and I'm being given opposing ideas to it. And um, I'm sure you know this about me. I I consider myself fairly open minded, but also I have a very strong viewpoint on things. Mm -hmm. And I don't back down from your viewpoint. Not that I don't back down necessarily, but for a lot of people, I don't think they've taken the time to deeply think about that certain topic, especially mm. if it's philosophical or political. Mm. Um, and I've, whatever you say, I've already argued the counterpoint. <laughs> but I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like, mm, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm already thinking, I'm already letting you, like, in yeah. my mind, ready for, with a response of the counterpoint to it. Mm. But at the same time, I very much enjoy debates and conversations with people with opposing viewpoints Mm -hmm. because I deep down inside, I hope I change my mind, right? There's this hope that I learn something and another argument is presented that's strong enough to sway those beliefs. Yes. Or even if they're incorrect to affirm what I already Mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I was was thinking about these topics, of course, in the last couple of days, and it it goes into this concept of masculinity and manliness, which is the stubbornness. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, you notice sometimes when there's heated debates amongst men in particular, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> people have a tendency to stick to their idea because they want to be right yes. versus finding out what the truth is. Yes. And, and, and I, that should be the root of debate. Yes. Is getting to the truth. The truth right. of the matter. Mm-hmm. And, and they say the study of philosophy is the ultimate why. <laughs> the ultimate truth. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important to have these dialects, these dialectics, uh, simply for that. Yeah. So thank you yeah. for having me on yeah, the show. Yeah, you're welcome. That was a long answer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this psychology. going to be like that the whole episode. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, That's don't be. Don't how be. I am. <laughs> I appreciate you giving that background because I, I, for one, am just fascinated by philosophy. I think philosophy is just a really interesting concept because I like the idea of pondering the bigger things in life. Right. Why are things the way that they are at like a fundamental level? So the first thing that I'll ask you to kind of start off the, the topics of our conversation today is thinking about responsibilities that men have to society, right. more so the duties that we have. And I think in particular, you wanted to talk about the duty that we have to a partner and in love. Yes. So... What duty do you think there is to someone in love oh from God. a man, right? Oh because I mean, I'll, I'll share my own yes, thoughts for please. a moment. Yeah. I, I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, like if I'm thinking about duty to a person, I think of, for example, like um, okay, what is duty? What what is duty? A duty to me is yeah, to it's equivalent of yes. responsibility. Okay. It's an unwritten responsibility. Okay. That's what cool. I see as duty. It's something that's there that is. It's like a moral responsibility, right. I guess, in a way. There's right. a duty that lies in a moral responsibility. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I interpret it as. That's pretty much the core of my conception of duty. It's, mm. it's completely tied to morality, so I think mm-hmm. you're 100% on the right track. Mm-hmm. But yeah, please. So then when thinking on. of duty in the concept or in the, the realm of relationships or love, I think of um, faithfulness to a partner. I think of, in a way, sacrifice, but a part of me disagrees with the idea of sacrifice mm. in a relationship mm. um, because it's kind of like, well, what are you sacrificing and what for? I don't know, and I've, I was kind of hoping that you'll be able to give me some more <laughs> yeah, things to grasp sure, onto because sure. I, I didn't think of this question so much in the terms of relationships. Mm. I was thinking of duty just in general societally, right. but duty and love is like, a part of it maybe is like, even is there a duty to find love? Is that a thing as well? Like, do you need to find mm. partnership? Because I think there's a strange, I, even me saying strange is kind of telling <laughs> of how I feel about this, but I think that there's a strange narrative where people are, now in this current generation saying that maybe they don't need a partner anymore you can go through life without a partner but i think that that comes down to like the human nature of of things in love is that that it's something that has existed forever and it will continue to exist forever one would assume love will but then that comes in the morality of it is it immoral to not want to be in a relationship i don't think so right It's it's a tricky thing in my head i think for that one the the moral question of oh that's 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 a big one Mm -hmm. Okay, how how I'm gonna <laughs> how I'm gonna lay this out for Please. you? 
to me, in the simplest terms, mm. a duty is a promise. Okay. And the interesting thing about a promise is that you're the one that holds yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So because you can break a promise, you can break a promise, but you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this word "ought" or "should." Yes. Right. Yes. And this plays with the idea, duty, and morality uh, of the ideal. And for me, I'm a very top-down type person. And what I mean is, in any situation, I look at the ideal. What is the best possible outcome? Mm -hmm. And then you start inserting reality into it. Sure. Right? (laughs) Sure. And you move from the ideal to the real. I think when a lot of people think about duty, they think about duty towards another person Mm -hmm. that's how i'm thinking of it yes Mm -hmm. and specifically to to relationships what that is specifically a duty to other people but you also have duties to yourself so for me specifically i don't know and how long does it take for you to say i love you in a relationship Ah. To say it versus feel it is, a, is a two different things, man. <laughs> you shouldn't man. say it if you don't feel it, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that the other way. I'm, uh, I would likely not say it uh, even though I am currently feeling it. When would I you would say wait. It? Specifically so say specifically it. say it, I would wait a few months. I would probably wait at least like three plus months. Okay. Yeah. I think that's actually very normal. Sure. I think that is a normal amount of time to know mm. someone to feel that. And that's... Uh, not saying if you don't say within that time is not normal. Yeah. Everyone goes at their own pace, but I say normal because that's how usually I feel. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking you that question specifically because I feel like in a relationship, when you say, I love you, mm-hmm. it's a promise. I get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a promise specifically saying that I care for you and will care for you. Mm-hmm. A little bit off topic, but on topic, what is your definition of love then? Because mm-hmm. when you say, I love you, mm-hmm. there's three components, I, you, and that love yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, So what does that word mean to you? To me, it's like an unending care for a person. Okay, so when you say, I love you to someone, it's a mm-hmm. promise of un- un- unending care for that person. I guess that's my definition, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I feel, to talk for a second on that, I feel like I've mentioned that in previous episodes here too, but I've said it definitely to my friends. It's that... I, I don't think that your love stops after a breakup, for right. example. Right. I've talked about that quite a bit. I think that it does evolve mm-hmm. and that the relationship changes, but I think that the love always stays there mm-hmm. to some some degree, right? It, that, that's the whole like platonic versus romantic love kind of comparison too. But anyway, sorry, back no, to you about I wanted your definition to, of love. Is. Yeah, I wanted to ask you because I feel like everyone may have a different definition of love mm-hmm. and therefore everyone's promise of I love you mm-hmm. is, is different. I never, I've never thought of it this way. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man, this is cool. This is cool. So here's the other thing mm-hmm. too. I I speak a lot about morality, and I feel like maybe it gets a bad rap of like, this is how, what is right. This is what is wrong. Mm-hmm. And though I believe in a objective morality mm. to things, there is subjectivity within that. Yeah. So there's there's caveats. Yeah. There's caveats. Because my answer to what does love mean to me is that. I am, I care more about you than I care about me. Mm -hmm. So your definition and my different are actually quite different in that way. Yours is unending. Mine is about more them than me. Hmm. This this idea of maybe not sacrifice necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that, I guess, comes back to that point. Yeah, but in a situation, I would rather see you happy and get what you want than I Hmm. do, but not whining about it. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. There's those people that like sacrifice something and they're bitter or right. whatever. Right. But when you're in love with someone, you happily sacrifice things mm-hmm. for their happiness. That's what I think that is, which is love. It is a promise. And that promise is a duty to, f- to not break that promise. Hmm. So I have another thing to talk about. Yeah. So... What happens when you fall out of love of someone? Using my definition of love? Who your yourself's yeah. definition of yeah. love. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's cases in which you've had you've said I love you mm-hmm. and you've meant it in the moment, mm-hmm. but as time passes or as as things happen, you truly no longer love that person. Um, but to like the I mean? same degree. 
to the same degree or at all. To me, I, well, see, this is where maybe I would disagree is that mm. I do think, I genuinely believe that once I've told somebody that mm. I love them, mm. that at least a percentage of that, like 1% of that is always there. It doesn't ever completely go away. That's my personal Interesting. belief Interesting. Even my first mm. relationship, the first person that I dated, I don't talk to them anymore at all, right? I haven't spoken to them in a couple of years. But I would still be interested and hope that they're doing well in life and hope that they're okay. Mm. That because my definition of love is that care for that person. Right. I mean, I've I'm pretty sure I've told you I love you. Yeah. And it's like I it's just like I I, I have a level of yes. care yes. for somebody. And at that point, if I've said I love you, mm. it just means that I, I care about you. Mm. I care about your well being. I care about you're doing okay. You've never and had... I don't think that it goes away to zero. You've never had either a romantic relationship or even a friendship turn bad to the point of hate not that i can think of wow. off the top of my head and i don't know that's a, yeah I don't, I don't know if that's, that's... A, a normal thing or not or maybe i'm like maybe i don't remember maybe my right. mind is zero <laughs> yeah. i don't know but no i haven't i haven't gone to a point where it's like no i hate somebody interesting mm. <laughs> sorry now i feel, I feel mm. like i'm like the uh like the psych psychologist going, mm, tell me more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this argument. Yeah. Uh, okay. So to get back on topic mm. about, about duty. Um, so yes, I feel like we do have duties to our partners. Faithfulness obviously mm. is one of them. Um, and, and the thing about duty and specifically masculinity is that, you know, uh, a man of your word, there's all these like mm -hmm. phrases, right? Mm -hmm that dictate how a man ought to be that just to, for a second yeah. being a man of your word that was something i thought about when you mentioned earlier the fact that you're making a promise to somebody and that you ought to uphold that promise yes. you said that you should not break a promise yes. and that is that whole idea of all you have all all a man is good for is their word if their word is garbage they're not a good man right and so i i, I agree with that anyway sorry back to no. duty yeah and man and, and word and to a degree, that is everything, right? If you're someone who cares about not just what the world thinks of you and those around you think of you, but what you think of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about duty, specifically as a moral stance, mm -hmm. it's not about the consequences. Um, there's a whole other side of moral philosophy called consequentialism, mm -hmm. where a good act is one in which there is the most good things. Hmm. You've heard of hmm. that, right? I haven't, no. Oh, really? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think most people think that of morality, right? That makes sense. You do the thing that creates the most good. Mm -hmm. Even if that means some bad things will happen or you break your It's word. like the whole morality debate of, I don't know, if, you, if you're... A, an autonomous driving car. Yes. Right? Oh, God, Choosing that's Choosing yes. whether or not to hit the baby or yes. plow through 10 people. Exactly. What is worse? Right. Um, I would argue that hitting the baby is probably <laughs> yeah. the better choice. I'm sorry. But... Um, yeah, that's a whole other topic that yes. I've thought of. Uh, we can go into the whole thing about uh, ethics and technology, actually. <laughs> another, another time. Another yeah, time. No, no, not right now. We're yeah. talking about your, your duties to... Oh, the thing I wanted to speak with next is essentially duties to yourself. Mm -hmm. right so in order for yourself to have duties to other people you should at the very least also uphold duties to yourself mm -hmm. and what that means specifically is and i feel like people may maybe not disagree but have a certain a different values but you i to a degree believe we have a duty to ourselves to be better people mm -hmm. not everyone necessarily leaves that sure we have a duty to our health uh we have a duty to be uh, to to our education to agree to be an educated person mm -hmm. but these aren't selfish reasons these aren't selfish duties because ultimately you try to become the best version of yourself for other people mm -hmm. and i feel like in, That's an interesting idea, an interesting concept that even though you're working on yourself, it's for other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. If if you were to ask me in this uh, little podcast mm -hmm. uh, what the meaning of life is, because I get that all the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> I, study, I study philosophy. So what's the meaning of life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people are always like that. Mm -hmm. I, I actually have an answer for yeah. you, and it's involved in this idea of duties. Uh, I won't get into it right now, but it's an underlying basis of the question I always ask myself is why do anything? Mm. 
Why do anything? Yeah. We're gonna die. Yeah. We're gonna but die. That's just such a terrible way to live. <laughs> <laughs> thinking that though. But I, I get what you're getting at where it's yeah, why why do anything for anybody else? Why look out for the good in other people, the good for yourself, the good for society, if at the end of the day it means nothing? And that's a extreme, but like there's morality to accept the fact that you're alive and that you're here and that you do owe something to the people around you. Or I feel as though you owe something to the people around you, to your neighbor. But do you? Why? I feel like you do. Why? Because I would expect the same for myself. I okay. would, and I, I, I don't know. I, f- I find joy in looking out for other people. I, I guess to use my definition of love and having a certain level of care for somebody yeah. and hoping that they're doing well and that they're succeeding, that they're happy that applies to i guess in general the world around me too i hope that most people are okay right that i interact with and so i care about the world i care about people mm-hmm. right and I, I don't know i think that that's a, a would, good thing <laughs> would you still do these things if you didn't care because that's the question that's the duty duty means doing it regardless if you want to or not mm. and i'm so attracted to this concept of duty by the way the technical term is deontology <laughs> so i'm a deontologist sure and the thing about duty and the reason i like it so much it's it's an objective viewpoint mm. it's not based on your feelings mm. right it's based on what you ought to do regardless of your feelings regardless of the consequences so what ought a man do with love then i think that going back to what we were talking about mm depends on your definition of love hmm. and i actually kind but then of, where's the objective part in that but the, this is the oh, subjectivity yeah. within the yeah, objectivity. yeah exactly as, yeah. as i mentioned yeah, yeah. so love is a weird one mm. because um the other thing i wanted to sort of talk about philosophy is a very male dominated field hmm. a very male I guess, yeah when you talk field. about philosophers and you're quoting the different major philosophers in the world they're male they are. Um, what, some say one of the reasons as to why is that if anyone cares, there's these sort of five branches of philosophy. One of them is logic. Logic is its own branch of philosophy mm-hmm. and it's considered the most like respected one because you use logic to prove other philosophies. Sure. Um, what I mean by that, oh God, I want—I don't want to get too technical. Um, but logic is essentially algebra, but with arguments. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. A equals B and B mm-hmm. equals C, then A equals C. If this, then that. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So anybody who's taken any basic logic courses get an understanding of that. But it goes much deeper than that. But you use that format to prove anything in philosophy, that makes re- sense. regardless yeah. if it's morality or or the other topics, mm-hmm. uh, which I won't get into because not stupid. They're just <laughs> <laughs> we can see where Jeff's bias is. Oh God, yeah. I to take so many philosophy <laughs> courses and it's just like there's a there's one called epistemology which is the study mm. of knowledge how can you ever know anything off topic God. but what is the def- how do you know anything what is the definition of i know this i see it and i've practiced it i'll give you the real definition yeah <laughs> sure that's it's that's, that's why it's I a think. very difficult question unless you've studied it yeah so to know something is a justified true belief it must fulfill mm. those three categories for you to say you know something. Mm. It must be justified, it must be believed, and it must be true. Mm. I won't get into that specifically, but it's one of those things where it's sun like, rises in the east. I was literally mm. going to <laughs> use that example. How do you know that though? You only know that because of past experiences. But it's justified because you continue to see it. You believe it because you see it all the time, and it's true because it fucking happens. But what if it was not true? What if the sun didn't rise tomorrow? then it's no longer knowledge. Then I wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's Man. why I'm an ethicist. God. <laughs> and I, we spent an entire course on that. It's like, oh God, this is stupid. Yeah. Anyways, no. the armchair philosophy bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, once again, why I like deontology is called applied philosophy yeah. because you apply moral decisions, not in everything you do, but it's a large part of the choi- the important choices that we make that mm. define who we are. Sure. And to a degree, I don't, I believe life is harder if you don't have a framework to work with. That makes sense. There's a lot of dualist ideas with yeah. philosophy, right? Yeah. So the opposite of logic is feelings. Mm-hmm. We call it inclinations. Mm-hmm. That's a technical term. Mm-hmm. So reason versus inclination. The issue with inclination is that 
it can change. Mm. And, it can and I guess this is where you can't say that you know something about love and that's why it's subjective and with an inclination or a feeling, that's I guess what you're getting at with how you can fall out of love with somebody. Yes. Mm. But love by definition is a feeling, which is an inclination. Mm-hmm. So how are we supposed to apply can't define lo- it then. logic? Yeah. Why are we why are we trying to define an inclination with logic? Mm-hmm. That's why love is a weird topic to talk about philosophically mm-hmm. because I don't really feel like you can actually be right about it hmm. because it is by definition subjective. I feel like you can do better <laughs> sure, sure. within your framework of love. But I think that's why when you ask people for love advice specifically, it's hard mm. because we've all been there. We ask, what should I do in this relationship? Yeah, yeah. You listen to all the reason and logic and you do the exact fucking opposite. Yeah, yeah. Cause you're still at the end of the day, you're going to go with your inclination. Yes. As much as I personally try to apply logic to things and morality mm-hmm. to things, I also have a deep understanding that that may not be the best route. Right? I get what you're saying. Logic is a tool that mm-hmm. you can use to do other things but should you apply it so specifically to something that's completely apply it to that? something that cannot be explained logically, then that's a different, that's you're beating your head against a wall here. That's not going to do anything for you. So I guess then a, a question that I'll ask to keep us on this topic of love here is has your perception changed over time with how you view love, I guess, from a, a sense of duty with man Right. I mean, I'm thinking of myself being, I'm not that much younger than you. I'm six years younger, I think. Right. right? Myself being younger than you thinking of yourself at my age, mm. right? When you're starting your, your pole dancing, <laughs> right? Your pole dance career. Did you think of love or the duty to love any differently than you do today? In short, no. Hmm. And I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go through sort of my ideas of love. And like, I want to state that, one's idea of love shouldn't, should, shouldn't be applied to everyone. So this is just my mm-hmm. own personal experience. That's what I'm trying but to say. But what I want to yeah, say yeah, to yeah, that, yeah. though, yeah. is if you come across somebody else's definition of love and you decide that you subscribe to that, you like that, and you want to adopt that for yourself and believe it, go for it. Yes. You know, so that's a thing, too. I'm a very different, I was going to say strange, <laughs> guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've traditionally had more female friends than male friends. Hmm. And I've had, uh, you've t- actually, I feel like you've talked to this about your other podcasts, some of your female friends and more male friends, yes, et cetera. Yes. But I find it a little bit rarer to meet another guy that has traditionally more female friends. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And I don't know why. I've, I've thought about this and there's no reason to it. It's just I'm... Pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but in you know, your adolescence, and your youth, then I guess that would be true too. It, yes. Mm-hmm. And I've, um, this is going to be weird to say, but... I don't really like people. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you, everybody. <laughs> um, like, I like people. Yeah. Like, I, I'm talking about romantically specifically. Mm. But for me, I've always had a very... I don't really fall for people. Mm. And I think some men, maybe because of, once again, their uh, lack of experience around women... It's unfortunate, but mm. I know I've known men that only see women as a romantic or sexual partner. I can get that. Mm-hmm. And when you view the world like that, yeah. you will not make a friend. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, another part of deontology and duty and that type of thing in a more academic way is that you should never see a person as a means to an end, mm. but an end in itself. Mm-hmm. And people are the only things in the world that you should ever treat as an end to itself. And what that means is really you should never use people. Right. Right. And I feel like some men use women, not even just in a sexual way, in a in a way to, to, to be vulnerable. Mm. A lot of men can't be vulnerable on, with other men. Right. But they can be with their female partner right assuming you're a heterosexual male etc etc et yes, right? yes, yes, yes we're making a lot of assumptions yes yes so to, for a lot of people um it's uh it's called emotional work mm-hmm. uh, a lot of women in particular i've read articles about this is not academic necessarily but women do a lot of emotional work in a heterosexual male female relationship because men are so guarded in that way hmm. 
for me specifically, because I don't view women as someone that I need to do emotional work, I'm I'm pretty open person. And similarly to yourself, and that's why we vibe. And yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You as a person, because you're not one of those douchebags. Like, <laughs> uh, all these chicks are banged. <laughs> and and yeah. you don't see them as a means to an end, and right. the end is sexual gratification, right? They're an end to them, themselves, right? Right. So, so for me specifically, uh, and I know this sounds probably bad mm. and probably not the nicest thing, but I generally don't date women I like. Weird, weird. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. What? Okay, okay, <laughs> what? okay, 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 okay. Even from a very young age. Okay, so this is a yeah. weird thing. Even from a young age as like 14, 15, you're adolescence and stuff like that. I've said to myself, probabilistically, mm. the person you're currently dating is not going to be the person you're going to spend the rest yeah. of your life with. Yeah, yeah. Probably, <laughs> sure. Like, fuck feelings because you know once yeah. again logic da 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 yeah sheer numbers game mm -hmm. if you have eight okay this make it look weirdly enough i feel like on average people have maybe five or six romantic relationships in their mm -hmm. lives so even if you have five romantic relationships that person that you are with only well, has like mm -hmm. a 20 percent chance of being yeah. with the person the rest of your life right yeah so by that's that's just the way i've thought about things by the way like that's that's the first thought i to have to me it's a scary way to approach love that's my personal opinion on right. just that that tidbit and I'll, I'll let you continue your, yeah. your background to that but <laughs> yeah. to me like when i think about that it's like you would enter a relationship and this would be interesting for for kabir being my my co-host because he's talked about the fact that he doesn't think relationships last this is a similar approach i guess in a way okay yes and no they're meant to end yes and no <laughs> sorry <yeah. laughs> reason i say that is because it, it kind of seems like i'm presenting the idea that i'm not serious in my relationships mm -hmm. and that is 100%. that's not true you're not a committed one right now yeah and and i will be committed to the person that i am with um i i always i love this quote dating is getting to know someone until you realize you don't like them <laughs> to a degree right <laughs> You yeah. go on dates, you go on like three, four dates, yeah. you're in there and it's like, you know what, I don't really like this yeah. person. Yeah, Sometimes you figure it out within a few weeks, yeah, sometimes exactly. you figure it out in a few years. Isn't dating's just weird in no, that way, right? No. You're you're trying, you're just being with someone to realize you don't mm -hmm. like them. And that's not the way with friendships or yeah, anything, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're just friends. Yeah. yeah, you're just friends. And even if you don't like something about them, mm -hmm. you generally still stay, stay friends unless something very severe, right? Mm -hmm. But in dating, it's like, ah, there's these things I kind of don't like. Okay, cool. Let's throw it away. That happened. Right. Even for myself, and it goes back to this sort of promise, right? When I am serious about something, you have to be authentic and sincere, mm -hmm. right? When you say, I love you, it should be authentic and sincere. And mm -hmm. it's not, you shouldn't say it at all. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a lot of people feel like pressured to say it when the partner says it and stuff like that. But I've always been a big believer of saying it when you think, yeah, how do you yeah. do it? For me, uh, as I stated, I don't naturally fall for people. But I, when I date someone, I date them until I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes a year. And sometimes that takes a year and a half. Right. I currently I'm in a three and a half year relationship. Right. And I haven't found something in which I don't like about well, I found yeah. things I don't like, but not yeah. to a degree where the, the good outweigh the bad. Right? right. So I've had this sort of probabilistic approach to love. And this also goes back to this idea of duty. If you if the reason you're with someone is because you like them, because they butterflies and all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Does that mean that you're going to change when you don't feel that eventually? Hmm. And I feel like that lacks sincerity, that lacks authenticity. What that is, is how you are in the moment. Mm. And that moment can last a year or two years, but it's going to go away. So when you date someone you that like... That sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's reality, yeah. right? You, you going from the ideal to the real, mm -hmm. you have to... For me personally, that's what I think about. When I'm dating someone I like, I think about how I'm going to treat them when I don't like them. In the moments I don't like them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real and uh, this is a relationship thing where they say, you know, the, the measure of relationship isn't, isn't when things are going well. It's when things are not going well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So when, when you date someone that you're just... Ugh, your, your heart's just aching every moment you're with them in in the good way. I don't know why I yeah, said aching. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I feel. When it's just running off these butterflies. Yes, it's running off these inclinations. Yeah. 
and there's a fear for me personally when I do like someone. There's that fear of when this runs out, this is going to be over. And that feels insincere to even start it. Wow, man. So. Huh. <laughs> so that's so this is your take on duty in a in a relationship. Duty yes. to love is you're making a promise that the reason that you're with this person is more than just a feeling. It's not just an inclination. Mm-hmm. It is a conscious decision that yes. this is someone who you want to just be with. Yes. Because and live your life with. Potentially, right? Hmm. And until proven otherwise. <laughs> And Guilty until <laughs> yeah. proven otherwise. But as I'm getting older. Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry, it's okay as you're getting older. But as I'm getting older, following my own logic, mm-hmm. the probability of the person that you're with is now higher. Yeah. So the way you think about it changes. Mm-hmm. Right? There will always be the off chance that the person you're with isn't the one. And uh, it, it, I, I make that sound because mm. the way I speak about my relationship, I say to my partner when, when we talk about the future, mm-hmm. I literally say, in the future when you get married, either to myself or someone else. Wow. You, you have that conversation, I, hey? Oh, well, not, well, I think every, every, to a point, they just like the fantasy land of the future, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But the way I state it is, when you get married in the future with me or someone else, Mm -hmm. the assumption isn't that they're going to be with me because the way I talk about my partner is that my love for you extends beyond your love for me. Hmm. And, and that goes back to, that goes back to your definition of love, love, dude. Cause yeah. (laughs) Cause you, if their happiness outweighs yes. yours, that is when you are happy. That's when yes. that's your definition of love. Exactly. So if their happiness meant that they're with somebody else, yes. you still love them. Yes. Holy shit, man. <laughs> God. Yeah, man, you get dude. Oh my God, you actually Holy get me? Holy shit, you man. You actually understand me? And oh, guy, okay, I'm going to talk about I cheating. really hope that people <laughs> stuck around for this so far. I know it's been a while. And like it felt like we were going in different directions at points. But to come back to this, fuck, yes. man. That's crazy. Yes. That's sick. That's really cool. Yes. And, and so, uh, a lot of, uh, some, I mean, a lot of dating relationships and things go around this idea of cheating. We, we talk mm-hmm. about this, this duty to not cheat. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and you know, honestly, okay. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is if my partner found someone that's honestly better than them. Yeah. But sorry, better, better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're better than me? <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. I, just, I need to say that at least once in, every time. Oh man, uh, Jeff used to get so hammered. You had a you had a period of time where you were you could take a drink, and I don't know if that's still the same. But I remember that you did the. You think you're better than me? Oh, man, so good, so good. But if I if I truly honestly love someone based on my definition, yeah, and I saw someone that was truly better than me for this person, I would happily sacrifice my own, you know, happiness. For them and mm-hmm. that is my definition of love God, what and here's the thing would i feel the same way if i was basing my decisions on on love mm-hmm. i don't think so because i would be so hurt by it right um you're that, trying yeah. to inject logic into it in order to alleviate yourself from pain that's the way i hear that Oof. to an extent the pain will be there mm-hmm. um i don't think it's to alleviate myself from pain it, it's once again for my conceptual love it's always about the other person mm-hmm it's to alleviate their guilt. To allow that. Oh, wow. Oh, right? Jeff, I like this. I like this <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Like, as much as we want to sometimes vilify our partners in mm-hmm. some way mm-hmm. when things aren't going good, if you truly love them, based mm-hmm. on my definition, uh, I, I keep saying that because yes, everyone's definition yes, is different. Yes. It's okay. Yeah. It's It's okay... And if they did it in such a way where it wasn't cheating, right? If yeah. they were like, hey, this person I think is better for me. Yeah. I still like you and even love you as a person, but I'm just happier with this person and I see the rest of my this person, then I would happily let them go. Yeah. It would hurt the same for me, once again, rewording my words, mm-hmm. but it would alleviate the guilt for them. Wow. And I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. That's really powerful. I like that <laughs> approach on love, man. I um, 
I mean, earlier I mentioned like if you if you listen to someone else's definition of love and there are parts of it that you subscribe to, you can pull that part, right? I don't know that I would fully agree with your definition of love, just thinking of my own, where it's like you that whole probability aspect yeah. of it. Mm. Like that to me is like, oh, like I get it. I get it. And from a number side, I, I'm a logical person, I mm. think, foundationally. But I agree that the chances are the person you're with right now, especially for most of this audience at a young age, that person's probably not the person you're going to end up with, right. just statistically. Right. But... Mm. I don't. I wouldn't take that part. I wouldn't approach love exactly. with that would, that yeah, mindset. Exactly. You but I love the way that you're looking at the potential of a relationship ending and still maintaining love because your love for the person didn't change. There's hurt in the loss of the relationship, but the love has still remained because your love is their happiness. Yes. Fuck, man, that's crazy. Yes. When we were talking, and I said a little bit ago while we were recording here that. Uh, I wasn't sure where things were going with this conversation and it's pretty crazy that it all came back together. To me, it's like, wow, like how did all these ideas now stitch back to this thing? And it makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know people listening. Yeah, I know. I hope it makes a lot of sense. (laughs) It it makes a ton of sense to me the way that your, your view of duty and love, duty being a promise, your promise to this person in love is that their happiness is going to succeed yours if necessary. You are working towards their happiness in a way. Yes. And if that even means that the relationship ends, but they're happier because of it, mm-hmm. that that's still love. Yes. That's insane, man. But here's the thing. Mm. You you should agree with the definition of love with their partner so mm. that they're doing the same thing to you. I get that. Wow. So, and I think that's the important part because I feel like in this conversation, it feels like a lot of sacrifice, mm. a lot of very cold decisions for the other person. And it make may make you feel like, uh, maybe not heartless per se, but mm-hmm. it does make it sound like I'm sacrificing a lot for mm-hmm. the other person. But to to oversimplify your view of love, intentionally oversimplify it for myself and for the listeners, the, the fundamental thing there mm-hmm. is that their happiness is the most important thing. So yes. if that's what you could agree upon yes. between yourself and your partner, that each other's happiness is yes. the most important thing, yes. then you don't yes. have to change your belief of your love and right. your definition of love, but you'll be on the same page in that sense. That's cool. And and not only that, if you truly believe that in an ideal situation where your partner is honest, mm-hmm. whenever they do do something that doesn't that that irks you in a way, if you understand from that perspective, you're like, "Oh, this person did this for my happiness." Mm-hmm. Even if the result wasn't my happiness, mm-hmm. the intention was. And that's why it goes back to this whole kind of consequences thing. It didn't matter what actually happened. Mm -hmm. Based on our definition, our agreed definition of love, you did this for my happiness. And even though it upset me. Oh, yo, that's such a crazy thing. And then suddenly I'm less upset. Suddenly I'm less upset. Suddenly like, ah, shit. Like you didn't, I know you didn't mean it. I didn't, you, I know you didn't mean to hurt me. Mm. Because I feel like sometimes in a argument where feelings get heated, um, it feels like they did it on purpose. They mm-hmm. did this to hurt me. And and that's almost never true. Mm-hmm. Assuming you're with a person that's a decent human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the moment, it feels like, oh, you, you want to vilify. Mm-hmm. You want to make the other person the bad bad guy. Because to, to a degree, we each in ourselves don't want to be the bad guy. We never think of ourselves as the bad guy. We yeah. think we're right. But if you conceive of love in, in the way that I conceive of love, and when that clicks, it'd be like, maybe they're not so bad. Maybe I'm overreacting. Mm-hmm. I'm upset. But maybe I made myself upset, right? Putting that, understanding that their goal was my happiness because my mm-hmm. goal is theirs. Mm-hmm. So with me and my conception of, of love and with my current partner right now, I mean, I'm not perfect. I get really defensive whenever we get into an argument. Mm. And I and I and it takes a moment for me to realize this, but I've I've talked this out with my partner and be like, hey, when I start getting defensive, let me know, because once I realize that yeah. I am not being unreasonable, but over reasonable, mm-hmm. like it's too logical, right? It's the stubbornness. It's, in the, a way. it's the stubbornness, mm-hmm. right? Because not necessarily you want to be right, but mm-hmm. in argument, you want your feelings to be validated. Yes. And a lot of times in order for feelings to be validated, you want the other person to agree with you and therefore you become defensive. Mm -hmm. Um, Then that's something I'm working on. And and we're going to do this day. Um, But whenever me and my partner have disagreements, arguments, things that irks us, every time 
there the resolution usually happens when one of us has that moment where like you know what they honestly were trying to do something for me mm -hmm. and i need to understand it from that perspective mm -hmm. yeah. man that's wild um <laughs> i really i really <laughs> like your approach on this and i'm gonna try my best here to kind of like tie up everything that we've talked right. about today so a duty is a promise. I like that. Yeah. And I'll take that away from today's conversation that a duty is a promise. I talked about at the start, my thoughts of what a duty were it was like you're it's a it's a moral obligation in a way. That's the way that I initially thought of it mm -hmm. was a moral obligation. It's a responsibility and it's an unspoken thing sometimes. But in the examples that we've used saying I love you, for mm -hmm. example, that is a spoken duty that you've now put out there into the world with your yes. partner. Yes. At that point, then you go and you try and define what love is to each of you. Mm -hmm. And if you share the same definition of love, that's when I feel like maybe you're more likely to find success in that relationship. Or if that relationship ends, it might be okay if your definition of love is something like the one that you have, mm -hmm. which is that the other person's happiness is paramount to your own. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it took me by surprise to hear that, but I love <laughs> it because it, it makes a lot of sense. And my my own definition of love being that i have this unending care for this person that fits into that a little bit it does yes it fits it's into just that wording it a little bit and it's and that's just from my own right. way of understanding the way that i speak or anything but i totally subscribe to what you're saying which is that if this person that i told i love you to at some point is happy i'm happy mm -hmm. i'm happy for them Right. And that's, I guess, like the, the foundation of your definition of love. Yeah. I think that like men having a duty to love and be in a relationship or a partnership with somebody. I think that that duty, that promise is going to be subjective to an extent. But I think the objective thing mm -hmm. of a duty amongst men to love is that you are communicating that duty to your partner. You're communicating that definition. I'm just laughing because the battle where times you say duty. Dude, man. <laughs> I know. You know what's funny? It's so hard. <laughs> what's funny is this exact same thing, dude. This just goes to show that no men are mature enough for this content. <laughs> because on the episode two weeks ago, which you haven't seen yet because yeah, it's not out yeah. yet. But the episode two weeks ago, the guys are all laughing at me saying duty as well in this that same is, episode. You say, it just say it so many times. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you for coming on the show. Okay, all right. Um, I wanted to just kind of tie things up there and, and wrap it up a little bit. But uh, I like talking to you because you have this. It was such a, it was, for lack of a better word, it was a long path to the destination. <laughs> yes, yes. But the destination was so worth oh, it to me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I fucking loved that. That was so cool, oh, man. Okay. It was like a like a like an epiphany for me in a way. And like this is now going to be a targeted message for a second. I'm looking at the camera here. My friends, my guy friends in particular, <laughs> y'all listening to this. If any of you have gone through heartbreak recently, listen to this shit and just think about it for a minute. Because fuck, man, that is amazing. That's a cool way of looking at things. At least verbalizing it, putting it out into like a spoken definition. Because yes. that's the thing. You can feel things. You can have a sense of things. But in, unless you can articulate it, it goes back to those kids. The three, four-year-old kids that are just, <laughs> their days are nonsense. Yes. <laughs> it's the same thing. If you yes. can't articulate the way that you're thinking or the way that you're feeling, your inclinations, then it's hard to understand them. But I love the way that you define this. I think that that was really, really cool. Um, so thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for taking the time out of your day. And everybody listening and watching, if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed for more shit like this. This is <laughs> awesome. And we'll see y'all next week. Peace.